I was quoted prices by the utilities I met with here today, or the public fire districts here for wind in Nebraska at about $25 a megawatt hour. We'll go back and look at where 25 would be in those charts. You'll see they're off, literally off that chart. Uh, the cost of nuclear has probably risen post Fukushima. There is um, a lot of um, thinking that new regulations for safety and certainly new financing costs for nuclear are going to drive those costs higher than what was assumed in 2010. Let's just go back and look what 25 is on the onshore wind. Here's 25 right here, and you'll see we, and this is the subsidized cost. So we're below, in 2012, we were below the low point for 2015. So there's reason to think it'll get even better. So what did we do? We took those, that data we just were looking at, and we ranked it. You'll find this in the book. There's a ranking from highest cost to lowest cost, taking the midpoints of those ranges. But that's not the whole story. There's risk involved in the choices that you make, and this is the main lesson. We identified what we call cost-related risks. There's the risk that you'll have construction cost overruns, famously for some projects. There's a risk that um, fuel costs will escalate faster than you anticipate. It has, over time, jumped around. Price of coal is now, for the, it's woken up, if you will. After many years of being pretty flat, it started to increase, and the cost of transportation for it as well has. Some of these investments are bet the company investments. They're so large that um, it would swallow a company if they got in, into one of these investments. Right now, there's a utility in Florida called Progress Energy which has spent a billion and a half dollars on a nuclear power plant. They have nothing to show for it yet. They haven't broken ground. The original cost of the plant was estimated to be $6 billion. The new estimate is $27 billion, so four times. They didn't set out to build a $27 billion power plant when they made probably good faith decisions at the beginning to start this, but that's what they are on track to do. It will never be built for that cost. There's no way. You'd be talking dollars per day for, for residential customers in Florida, multiple dollars per day just to get that to happen. Um, there are also a category of risks we call time-related. What if you have delays in construction? What does that do to your cost structure? Pretty significant, as it turns out. What if um, environmental regulations don't turn out to be as easy as you thought they might be? What if they're hard? And what you just built has to be cleaned up after built, essentially. Um, what if uh, there's a catastrophe at the plant? These are all things you can apply to any plants, but if you start looking at different kinds of plants, they apply differently, and that's the lesson here. So we combined all of those into one set of risks that we use for, cons for, construct uh, for uh, a scoring. Construction, fuel and operating, new, the cost of new regulations, the, the risk of new regulations, the risk of a carbon price, water constraints, the capital shock risk to a company undertaking projects, and planning risk. That refers to what if the plan that you accommodate this plant that's going to be built six years from now, what if things change? What if Nebraska loses or gains uh, low? What if uh, new technologies come along and displace uh, what you're doing? What if a competing technology has a lower cost profile than the one you're building. So that's what we did. We put those all in a blender, and you can read about the computation. And so now here's our, our cost ranking. You saw this before. Next to it now is a risk ranking. So the same set of resources are now rated from high to low on their risks. You probably aren't surprised to hear that all the possible investments that you could undertake, we deem nuclear to be the riskiest. Now, that's not to say you can't build a nuclear plant for what you think you're going to build it for. You might be able to, but then again, you might not. And if you might not, you might end up at 27 billion instead of 6 billion, big problem. So, uh, there's several interesting things here. So, so that side is cost and that is risk. Nuclear goes from sort of middle of the pack on cost to top of the pack on risk. Uh, pulverized coal, actually you can't even build under the new EPA regulations a pulverized coal plant. This was actually done before they adopted those regulations. So if I needed to prove the case, I'd probably just done it internally. They've adopted rules that says that a new 
coal plant can emit nothing, no more carbon dioxide than an efficient natural gas plant does. Now, you can capture the CO2 and stick it in the ground or turn it into bicarbonate or soda or something, but actually those technologies aren't really available. They're perhaps on the horizon, I hope they are. Uh, but right now you can not even build. So there's a risk. So risk maybe becomes infinite on this one. But look what happens to large solar photovoltaics. It's, remember this was the old price, by the way. I didn't adjust these, so it probably wouldn't be quite as high on the list, but on the risk list, it drops fairly low. You're now hearing prices for solar and utility scale in the West with reasonable insulation, that is, solar resource, of eight to nine cents per kilowatt hour, 80 to 90 dollars per megawatt hour. Those are very competitive with these other technologies. But the real takeaway here, in some sense, is this one. Energy efficiency shows up as being both least cost and least risk. It's, it's already understood to be least cost. Least risk, why? Well, in part because it's small. It, it shows up in small increments. It doesn't take long to undertake. So you avoid all of those big bets, kind of risks, the planning risks, the capital cost risks. There's no fuel. Uh, there is a risk that it won't materialize. You might pick a bad program, which doesn't last the 20 years that you expect. But that's sort of moderate risk compared to the kinds of catastrophic risks that other resources can undertake. So I put all of that information about cost and risk on a single graph. Across the bottom, you will see increasing risk, and up the top, increasing costs. So it's really the same day that is presented in another form. We conclude, and again, I give this presentation in front of regulators and regulated companies. Now, public power is a different animal. You are not regulated by the state. You are regulated by your board of directors. Um, so the advice, I guess, would apply to the boards of directors of the public power districts. But more generally, this public power means that the citizenry is somehow the owner of the district. I mean, you're the, you're the voters who elect the board. You're the ratepayer owners of it in some sense. The, the strategies that we look at first is diversified utility supply. Just like your investment portfolio at home, you wouldn't put all of your money in one basket, or even two, or maybe even three baskets. You would go to 15 baskets. You need to do something similar with utility portfolios. You must utilize a robust planning process. Uh, robust is an overused word these days. What I mean by that is um, best industry best practices grant. Okay, so you basically construct portfolio. Let me show you one minute. You basically te you test out portfolios against possible futures. You vary the inflation rate, you vary the coal price, you vary the EPA regulation, you do all these things, and you see which of those portfolios actually work out better for you over the long run. Uh, transparent rate making practices. Don't hide the risk, don't bury it in some other decision or uh, make it possible for the utility to undertake an investment it shouldn't make. Um, I, as a public utilities commissioner, um, I made sure that we had as much um, openness as we could possibly get about the processes at our commission. When we did our big planning process, we had 34 legal entities intervening before the commission. Every organization you could name with an interest in energy was part of our hearings, and they got time to present witnesses and to cross-examination, cross-examine the company and other interveners. We got very accepted decisions that way. You end up getting much more buy-in if you conducted a really open process, and I hope that you're able to do that here. 